we're down to the headline now. Headline is going to tell you, it's the head and the spine line. It's going to tell you two things. It's going to tell you how smart you are about how straight across your hand that line goes, but it's going to tell you you've got problems in that spine. So, I, I don't give you this information because I'm just a palm reader. <laughs> I'm, I was, uh, fin I've got a master's degree in health education. I was finishing up my master's degree when I was in my 40s. I'm an old school teacher. And uh, I started reading these palmistry books when I was uh, getting my master's degree. And my gosh, it all fit together so well because the palmistry uh, stuff tells you your, the health, your health and your body. And then I picked up this old book that was written. It's, it's out of print now by a doctor, medical doctor, Eugene Scheinman. And he told how you could see the spine in that head headline. Most of your palmistry books doesn't say head and spine line. But it shows your spine. And of course, everything runs off your spine because that's where your spinal cord is. And it, it was true. I started using it and uh, it was very accurate. So you can see that spine line in that head, head and spine line. <clears throat> Find that chart that says uh, understanding your cervical spine. Look down at the bottom of that chart, and there's a picture of a vertebrae. Now those vertebrae are the little bony process all stacked up on the back of your spine, and they surround your spinal cord. And off of each side of each one of those uh, vertebrae, a nerves come out of the spinal cord, and it goes to different areas of the body. Your head, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your throat, your lungs, your, your heart, your stomach, your uh, arms, your legs. And uh, then, it, then those, nerves, those nerves go out into the body, the intermesh of the muscles. And then they end in your hands and your feet. You'll see that in a minute here when you get to this other chart. That other chart is... Uh, just a minute, I gotta turn my page here. It's called Chart of Effects of Spinal Misalignments. See the picture of the spine on the left hand side there? Where I circled out in red, that's where you're out of place. Then the next column is the name of the vertebrae, the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, tailbone. The next column is the areas that those nerves go to that come out of each side of each one of those vertebrae. The head, the eyes, the cheeks, the vocal cords, the heart, the lungs, etc. <clears throat> and then uh, that last column is the effects that you get if that vertebrae is turned out of place. Depression, high blood pressure, hay fever, heart problems, uh, lung problems, breathing problems, etc., etc. Go back to that column that says the name of the vertebrae. Underneath that Jupiter finger, starting in between your thumb and your Jupiter finger, going along the headline. Under the Jupiter finger, it's going to show your cervical vertebrae, one through seven. Underneath the Saturn finger, it's going to show your uh, thoracic vertebrae, one through twelve. And then underneath the Sun finger, it'll show your lumbar vertebrae, one through five. And under that uh, little mercury finger, it'll show your tailbone, your sacrum, your coccyx. And if you see a red circle in there, that's turned out of place. So you're all out of place in that whole area in your cervical. See, that's all colored in red there. Uh, you're out right at the top. You're jammed in that atlas and axis. That's the two vertebrae that sit right at the top of your spine. And it's jammed in that. Uh, <clears throat> here's how you check that to see if that's uh, out of place. Stand up straight. Sit up straight in a chair or stand up. And see if you can turn your chin over your left shoulder. And then see if you can turn your chin over your right shoulder. And I'll bet you it pulls in one or the other. It's only turned one way. And if you can't get your chin right straight across your shoulder, that vertebrae is out of that C1 or 1C, 2C. Those two vertebrae are out of place, the two that sit up underneath the skull. Then your thoracic 
which, which shows under that Saturn finger. You're out part of the way down there. Uh, it goes all the way down to about number nine thoracic where you're out. <clears throat> and that's the one that's underneath that Saturn finger. If you're out the top part of that spine, it usually throws you out in that lower spine to compensate. So then there's a little space where you're not out too bad. But then you're out in that lumbar area, especially down in, uh, well, let's see, a little bit in 1L, 2L, and 3L. The 3L is uh, your female organs. Haven't you had, oh, I thought you had a miscarriage. No, I guess not. You had the abortion. <clears throat> but you're out in that lower, in that lower spine. Because, look at that line that's right underneath where it says depression line. Uh, see, it says health line that runs vertical, runs up towards that murky finger. Starts at the fate line. That health line's your internal organs, your stomach, your spleen, your liver, your colon. And you want to see one clean line. But you're getting two or three little lines and one of them's broke, so it's a little stressed. That means in that lower part of that uh, spine you're out of place. Now that depression line where it tips down on the end, it's not terribly bad. Oh, it is in your left hand. <laughs> See where I've got that little black asterisk? Go down there to the bottom of the page. Depression line. Are you taking an antidepressant? The line in the left hand tips way down, but the right hand, which is the present hand, tips just a little bit so that indicates to me that you're taking an antidepressant because it's showing in your present hand not so bad but it's bad in that left hand that tips way down that means you're way out of place in that 1C 2C see where it says depression over there well you're out in that 6C too but most of all in that top it, it interrupts the blood flow going up into your head, the blood flow and the oxygen. And that's why it makes a depression line. It's having a heck of a time getting up into the skull. You're going to have to find a chiropractor. Oh, you're in California, aren't you? Palo Alto, I guess that's California. You're going to have to find a chiropractor. Ask at your health food stores or call around that has an extra eight months of training in doing cranial sacral work. Uh, don't just find a regular old chiropractor. They've got to have this cranial sacral work training, which is uh, extra eight months of, of schooling in order to do this. And what they do is those nerves that come off the top, that's 1C, 2C, they end in the roof of your mouth and they go in through your mouth and they, they massage the nerves and uh, relax the nerves and then they take their thumbs and they push that vertebrae back in place right at the base of your head and you don't want it to go too far or some of them have a little machine it's called let me see if I can say it it's called a just a minute uh, an orthogonal machine orthogonal machine and they just they lay on a table. I had to, had this done on my granddaughter. They lay on a table and they swing that little machine over and it goes down in that neck area and it relaxes all those nerves. And then they can just take their thumbs and push that vertebrae back in place. Uh, if you can't get your, your chin over your shoulder, I'm sure you're out in that top part. And then you need to get that fixed and get uh, a chiropractor to straighten up your spine. Oh, let me tell you a couple little stories here. I set up my booth. Uh, uh, this is a way you can keep your spine straight. I'd set up my little booth in uh, my high school. We were doing a fundraiser, and I had a bunch of gals walk in. And two of them walked over the table and had their palms red. When I read their palms, they had perfect spines. I couldn't believe it. It's not very often I see a perfect spine. And they were laughing and giggling, and they, most of their girlfriends come over. And they came over and they had their hands red. There were seven of them all together. Every single one of those seven girls, they were women in their 1920s. 
of every single one of those women had perfect spines. All seven of them. I looked up and I said, are you girls trying to trick me or something? I guess I couldn't believe it. And uh, they were laughing and giggling. And one little gal walked over and she says, oh, cat, I better tell you. She says, we're the walking club. We walk seven miles every day. Rain or shine, she says, if it's bad weather, we walk in the malls or in the gyms. And she says, when we walk, we walk at a good, fast clip. Well, that makes sense because those two big old uh, leg muscles are hooked to the two back muscles. And when they walk at a good, fast pace, those muscles go up and down, up and down each side of that spine. And it strengthens those muscles that hold that spine straight. So walking is probably one of the very best things you can do for your spine. I don't know that you got to go out and walk seven miles a day, but uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if I told you, your line is very intelligent. It goes right across your hand, and it's easy to get that spine knocked out of place. Oh, down at the bottom of your page, and Greet says, did you have an accident around 24 or 30? In between 24, that you have a broken lifeline. Yeah, your lifeline, if that breaks, that means you're not breathing real good. So you've done something. You've had some kind of an accident. Easy to have accidents or get get jammed up in the spine. Jumping on trampolines is hard on you. Uh, having a car accident, having a bike accident, <clears throat> playing contact sports, um, doing gymnastics. That's all really hard on the spine.